Hello Titans. Today I'm going to show you how to continue your ShapeBot project in Illustrator. Um, so one trick that I'm going to show you is you could use your, dupl your duplication technique on several objects at once by just clicking, holding shift, and continuing to click till you get all the shapes that you want to duplicate. Uh, and then just using the Alt button to click a duplicate of that whole shape. I want to show you something else now that you could do with just the selection tool. You could just literally drag this over itself this way and it creates a reflection of your shape. So if you needed to go in the other direction. I want those two things to uh, go to the back so I, I held shift while I selected the other one and object arrange send to back. Okay, I'm about to place another polygon with my polygon tool, and I've already told it that I want it to be eight sides. If I hold shift when I do it, though, it's going to keep it from being like uh, in a weird direction. So if I hold shift, you can see it snaps into the horizontal plane, basically. Um, I'm going to go over and have, make sure I have that shape selected, and I'm going to show you a new tool called the eraser tool, which I'm sure that you've used in other programs before, and you probably think you know how it works. But before I do that, I want to show you exactly what's really happening when you use the eraser in this program. It's a little bit different than what you might think. So I'm going to double click this, which is going to allow me to change the color of this specific shape since I have it selected. So if I choose a color on this area of where I want the color to be, and then I choose the specific color and press OK, it'll change to that color. When I use my eraser tool now, you'll see that what my eraser tool is really doing isn't so much erasing as much as cutting um, a hole in that object. So I'm going to do it again because you can see that it's curved. I'm going to Command Z and hold Shift while I do it because I want it to be perfectly straight because this is a robot part. So I was able to hold Shift and you can see that it cut away from the image. So just to give you a better idea of what's really happening, I'm going to make a really big one here. I'm going to use my eraser tool and I'm going to try and erase this image. So I'm not really erasing. I mean, it looks like I'm erasing in a way. Uh, and by the way, you might have noticed that here I clipped this other shape, but because this one is selected, it'll only allow me to erase from that specific shape, which is why this went unharmed. But now you can see that I've shredded this uh, shape that I have here, and it's not really erased. It broke it, it or cut it up into several separate pieces. So it's not really, um, I'm going to Command Z all that, which steps us back in time. It's not really erasing. It's more like making a hole in the image so that you could see what's behind it. All right, so um, that's my little, I'm going to delete all of this. I just have it all selected. I'm going to press the delete key because I don't want to leave something so messy on my page. It's going to lower my craftsmanship grade. So I'm going to press delete. All right, so now that I have this little hand that I made, uh, I'm going to put it to the position that I want and start putting it on all of the arms that, you know, need it. Uh, so I'm just going to alt-click. I'm going to rotate each one so it's going in different directions because it doesn't make sense. It should all go in the same direction. And let's say that I wanted this to have more of a metal look because it's a robot. Um, I could go over to, I'm going to select one of my shapes first, like this big torso. Uh, I'm going to go over here, but instead of picking one of the colors that I have available here, I'm going to go into this folder. Uh, this folder has a special place called Gradients, and you could go to any of these, but most of these are just flat colors. So I'm going to go to Gradients, and I'm going to look up some gradients that you might find on Gems and Jewels. And you can see that a bunch of gradients have popped up. So now whatever I have selected, if I go over here and click, it's going to... Um, make the thing filled with that color. Okay, so this is how I can color my whole robot using gradients, which will make it look a little bit more like metal. Um, maybe my robot is gold. Uh, maybe it's more of a grayish color. Uh, so all that's up to you, but I just wanted to show you how to use gradients as, as opposed to using flat, boring colors. Uh, I'm going to select this and do that, and you can see how quickly and easily this is going to be to cover my color my whole piece. Um, you decide what kind of color variations you want to have. You might want to have a color theme, or you might want to go, or like, meaning that you only choose a few specific colors and use them throughout, or you might want to go a little bit, you know, and make your rain, your robot uh, the whole rainbow. I'm going to go ahead and color up my robot, and I'll get back to you in just a minute. So I decided to color all the joints uh, of my robot dark blue in this gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing with my uh, joints that are hex are uh, octagonal. Uh, actually, these are hexagons. My hexagonal joints, and I'm going to go ahead and choose a different color for them. But I'm going to color them all at the same time. I selected them all by holding down the shift button as I selected them. And now I just grab this, and they all 
color change at the same time. So that's a good way to, con to color a lot uh, very quickly. I'm going to do the same to my arm joints. Okay, so now I've completed my first shape bot. I'm going to select the entire shape bot, command G it, which groups it together. So now if I make any changes to it, it'll affect the whole shape bot instead of being able to pull it apart like I normally am. Because I've decided I'm done with this robot and I don't want it to be changed by any of my future actions. Um, however, this is not a finished project. This is just one robot and I want you to create a group of five of them. So I'm going to shrink my robot put them over to the side to make room for the next guy that I'm going to draw right here. Okay, so you can see I have a pretty complex robot here and a pretty simple robot for my second robot. It's okay to have variation like that. Uh, also, this is a smaller bot than this guy over here. That's also fine. Um, but what I noticed is I forgot to finish this bot actually, so I'm going to go back and ungroup him. I'm selecting the whole robot. Command Shift G will allow me to ungroup him. So now he's separate. He's in pieces again. Um, and I'm going to redo this arm and finish it over here and also add hands to it so that that's not just a poker. Um, but then I'm going to continue my other robot. So I just wanted to let you know why this is changing when you see it on your screen. All right, so I thought of something else I wanted to tell you about. Um, I actually have another robot that I'm going to command V into the page that I was working on on a separate page. So there he is. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to just bring him over here next to my other robots for a minute and I wanted to show you a new technique that I actually wasn't planning to show but I'm going to add. Um, you are going to use your pen tool for this part so that's why I wasn't going to teach it but it is really useful. So uh, you might be wondering how I, I made this thing happen here because this isn't really a normal shape um, so I'm going to show you how I did it. Uh, I could with the pen tool, if, I, if I'm good at the pen tool, I could just do this or I could have also used the technique that I showed you with the shape, which is to use um, a rectangle and then use the white arrow to like start bending it into the shape that you want by clicking off of it and then bringing these in. But clearly I have something else going on for his nose. And I want to show you how I did that. I went over to my pen tool and I went to the add anchor point button. This allows me to click and I'm um, adding anchor points to the existing shape. So what's the point of that? Well, let me show you. So I clicked four separate dots. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this. And I'm going to use these dots, these anchor points, and adjust them to make whatever new shape I want it to be. So now I think it's pretty clear how I did that. Um, and I didn't want you to, when you saw that robot, I didn't want, oh, it looks like I have an anchor point that I don't need here. Also, if you want to get rid of an anchor point, you can go over to your anchor point tool and hold the button down again to the delete anchor point tool. That'll allow you to remove anchor points and change shapes. So if I want to, I could do this and it would change the shape. All right, so that's how I was able to make these new shapes. It's just adding extra anchor points and then using the white arrow to stretch them out into the position that I want them in. Another thing that I want, I'm going to delete these other shapes. Another thing that I wanted to recommend is that if you're having trouble like thinking of what kind of shapes your robot uh, you want it to look like, you might want to look up robots. Although I don't want you to draw an existing robot like Optimus Prime um, by sight or like Wally, -E, for example, I don't want you to just draw an ex a robot that already exists. You could look at them for ideas. Like maybe if I used a completely different shape, like this guy is a completely different shape than Wally, -E, but then I used his goggles over here because I wanted those eye shapes, there'd be nothing wrong with that because you're taking inspiration from other pieces and applying it to your own piece. But we're not going to draw characters that already exist because those characters have already been created by their designers. We can just borrow ideas from them. All right, so um, I'm gonna. I'm sure I'm putting up examples right now of different robots that you could look at for inspiration. But you don't want to copy an entire robot. Okay, you want to get different ideas from different places and make your own. All right, you'll see this guy again later. But for now, I'm gonna take him out of my piece. Okay, so you can see that I've got <laughs> a little carried away here. I really enjoyed making robots, so I made a lot of them. Um, we could speculate as to what each robot is for. This is a building robot. Um, this is a robot that can push things. He's very strong. This robot can drag heavy objects. Um, so we want to make our robots for the purpose of helping people. Uh, this is a transportation robot, and he also has like a little blaster here so he could destroy things that are in people's way. He can travel by both wheels and by his helicopter. 
Um, but I don't even tell you what every single robot does, but we always want robots to serve humans because that's what robots are all about. Uh, one thing I want to show is how I made this shape right here. I did use the pen tool for that shape, for that like canister or cup looking shape. So I'm going to show you how I did it. It's just click, click for the line, click and drag for that single arch. Whenever I make an arch in Photoshop, I shut off my anchor point with that upset MV. Click again for the line. And when I go to seal the shape, I click and drag to create one more arch. And that gave me all those cups that I use in uh, various places like this uh, canister here or the body over here. So just so you know how I made that shape, I know a lot of people have been...